Hi, I'm Don Pazette, co-founder and edutainer at IT Pro TV. We've curated a playlist of select episodes so you can get an idea of what it's like to choose IT Pro TV for your IT learning. It wasn't easy. There are more than 4,000 hours of IT training on IT Pro TV. Enjoy this episode and be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. All right, we now understand a little bit about the different capabilities of some of the Cisco platforms. We now need to see them in action and how they actually work at scale. Coming up next, Justin's going to help us. You're watching IT Pro TV. All right, welcome back to IT Pro TV. That's right. We are about to take a look at, well, Python and Cisco SDKs. And here to help us understand more about this and how it works at scale, Mr. Justin Denson. Justin, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Ronnie. All right, Justin. So let's go ahead and as we, we get started here, now that we understand a little bit more about the platforms, uh, talk about SDKs a little bit and also how the heck does Python integrate with that? Uh, all right. So at the SDKs, as a technical individual, we do love our acronyms, right? They're all over the place, APIs, but SDK, Software Development Kit. Now, some of you may be going, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not building like Microsoft Word. I don't need these. Actually, SDKs are usually a predefined set of toolings uh, that are provided to developers to make software development a little easier. But that software could be just small utility scripts, right? Instead of reinventing the wheel, someone sat down and said, you know what, we need to be able to do this reproducibly, and I've been playing around with it. We, we need to, to get it done. And as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at my screen. We're, we're going to interact with the Meraki uh, SDK, and there's a Python one, and there's a Node.js one. Believe it or not, this is a wrapper around the RESTful-based API. All it's doing is making web requests. And we can do that, right? We could always redo that over and over and over again. But we always have to do the same setup. Ah, it's crazy. Instead, what we have is the Meraki SDK. I will tell you at the time of this recording, there has been a, a recent update. So do be aware of that. Um, and I'll... I'll show you how to, to get things installed here just shortly. Um, so Python is one of the target languages for the SDK just because of ease of use and kind of its ubiquity uh, across various platforms. I can do it in Microsoft. I can do it in Mac. I can do it in Linux. And they're all available as far as Python is concerned. Now, these SDKs, what they do is they formalize kind of how do I interact with this system? How do I do this programmatically? And we're gonna see a couple of scripts that I've written, uh, just very simple utility scripts. It's not like a GUI, it's not something that pops up, it's not a web server, it's I'm gonna run it, get an output, boom, right? But by doing so, I can point it at many different places, I can use it over and over and over again. If it's in source control, then Ronnie and I can continue to make it better and as we build those toolings that may be built on top of one of these, our job gets easier, right? That's the idea anyway. Uh, I will forewarn you, if you get a little out of hand, your job might get harder for a little bit. Uh, I've written some utility scripts that just made my life a little harder in the short term, so do keep that in mind. Now, we're gonna take a look at the uh, Meraki SDK. Let me kind of point you to a couple of resources that you need to be aware of before we dive in though. And that's this getting started guide. So I'm going to open that in a new link and show you that. That's developer.cisco.com slash Meraki. And you're going to want to go to the getting started guide because that's going to tell you, hey, December 2nd, 2019, looks like there was an update. And notice pip install Meraki-SDK equal equal 1.5.0. I show you that because if you look up Meraki, in Python, pypi.org, there's like nine of them. Mm. These SDKs are, are getting better over time because I want a better experience, right? If I'm trying to teach Ronnie how to do this and he's just now getting into programming, they need to be a good experience for him, uh, kind of an ease of use. Well, when SDKs first start out, that's it's usually easy for some person. <laughs> it's not easy for many people. So we need to run that pip install and I already have this installed, but let me just show you. I'm just gonna copy, paste, and 
Notice mine says requirements already satisfied. Yours will actually collect all those, install them, and all it's doing is setting up uh, the ability to do SSL, uh, requests, uh, HTTP requests, and a few other kind of serialization formats to move back and forth. So, good to go. Secondly, I need to show you, well, Ronnie, I, I asked Ronnie to set up some Meraki stuff in house, and he said, no. <laughs> he said, are you crazy? That's a lot of work. Uh, and can be, but luckily, if you're just getting started, you don't need those. That's kind of tiny. It's really weird because on my screen, it is giant, but it was tiny there. Um, and that just reorganized everything. If I come to devnetsandbox.cisco.com, right, I can search for these uh, topologies, these systems that are online and hosted. That's great because I can now interact with things that either I don't have the money, the time, the space to host. Right? Or maybe even the know-how. Um, there is a Meraki always on. So we're going to use that one. There's also an enterprise one. Notice how this says reserve and this says always on. The always on ones, guess what? They're always on. <laughs> the reserved ones, you do have to reserve them. They're going to be made available to you. Those tend to be more complicated setups. This is a great place. Uh, Ronnie and I have spent a lot of time out of the show going... Well, how could we mimic this? How could we set this up on our local computer? We found some tools, some VMs, mm -hmm. uh, some other... Oh, you use GNS3, I right, do. Ronnie? Yep. Yeah, you can use those. But then you got to learn additional things, and that's not the purpose here. So we're going to use this Meraki Always On, and when you click on it, it's going to open this up. Uh, interestingly enough, this one has nothing on this side. <laughs> some of the other infrastructures have kind of a little topology map of like hosts and switches and routers. Uh, this one does not. Okay, so do keep that in mind. This is a nice way of going, oh, here's how that goes. I kind of glaze over these. This is some technical details that may be interesting to you. Maybe uh, there are sometimes limitations listed here that you'll need to take note of. I usually just skip down to the access creds. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't do what I do, but this will either give you a username and password that you can access these respective resources like SSHN or uh, various connections. But in this one, it actually gives you an API key. API keys are utilized in Meraki to, to provide access for those resources. It does that to ensure that I just don't show up at a place and go, oh man, I just found out a bunch of devices, some hosts, some client. Ooh, let me change this over here, I'll take this down. So this is an authenticated thing. This one's shared. If you were setting this up in your organization, you would issue these through the dashboard and you would not necessarily reuse the same one. These should also not be in source control. So that's kind of our setup there. And uh, Ronnie, I just have a question for you. What are some of the things that you may want to do with a Meraki dashboard that maybe we can do them programmatically. Oh, it may be just some, something as simple as setting up some type of IoT device, or just making sure it actually comes online that has the right configurations on it, something like that. Yeah, setting up an IoT device. That, and well, in order to set up an IoT device, we kind of need to know just what devices are there already, right? right? So let's back up and start there. I think that's a good place to start. If we hop over here, I have this script. This will be available to you. And uh, this is the Meraki SDK. Honestly, I could have written this in a, as curl, as a bash script with curl. It would not look this nice. Um, I could have written this with Python and made raw HTTP requests. Eh. The whole purpose of an SDK is the following. We'll talk about this Meraki API key here just shortly. Notice I have a client. I'll just call it Meraki. And then I have a little printout that says, hey, I'm going to get the organizations. Meraki.organizations.getorganizations. I don't need to remember, hey, is it slash v1 slash organization? I don't need to know any of that. I just go, hey, Meraki, under the organizations, can you give me all the organizations? And go, sure. And then I use these little two to separate the organization IDs and organization names. And then I just print those out. All right. And then I go, oh, you know what? I, I need to know some of the networks for an organization. 
I'm always going to use the first one just for ease of use. But you may find that you have multiple organizations and you need to select one. That Your scripts will get a little, little more complicated, a little more customized, but this is a good starting place. And I go, you know what? Just uh, give me the organization ID for the first one and then give me the networks, right? So meraki.networks.getorganizationnetworks. It's very declarative. It's not, I gotta figure out, what does this mean? I go, hey, Ronnie, what do you think that line means? He goes, well, it's probably getting the organization networks, right? And then I print that out, and then I go, you know what? I need to get a network device for a particular network, all the devices. And so I go, well, give me the networks, the first one, and use that ID and get all of the devices on that network. Now, I've just zoomed in to one thing, but technically you could use this to gather facts about many organizations, many networks within those organizations, and many devices within those networks within many organizations. So notice that scales very quickly. Mm -hmm. And all I'm gonna do is just loop, right? It may not be fast, but I guarantee you it's faster than logging in and click, 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 click. So let's see how this runs. And so I'm going to get devices, and I'm going to do this incorrectly initially. And, huh, that broke, right? It says HTTP response not okay. Hmm. This is where I say things are going to get a little better. This is not super informative, right? If, if I were to go to most people and go, hey, what's wrong? They go, hey, the HTTP. Network's probably down, right? That's actually what I thought initially. However, that will get thrown if I do not have an appropriate API key. All it does is say reject. And that's actually why it's not okay. You're getting a 401 or a 403, which is unauthorized or forbidden. To keep this out of version control though, I'm just gonna use a temporary environment variable. When I'm calling this, so I say Meraki API equals, and I'm gonna grab this API key, and I'm gonna paste it there, and now I'm gonna say Python, uh, Python get devices. So it's gonna get the organizations, and that was actually pretty fast, right? So I'm gonna scroll up. I actually printed out a lot more just for demonstrative purposes than I normally would. So here's all my organizations. And then I go, you know what, just give me the organizations for DLAB. It has the following networks getting, and I actually, uh, I forgot to put in a little printout there. Ha 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 ha. So I'm just gonna say nets there, but that's all right, I'll, I'll leave that for you. You can play around. So we get all these networks, but I'm just gonna grab the first network and say, getting the network devices for network Liola. Lioli, is that how you pronounce that? Yep. I'm gonna go with it. Uh, and it found all these devices. Notice I get square bracket, which is an array, and then I get a bunch of dictionaries, and it tells me address, firmware, floor plan ID, LAN IP, latitude and longitude, model, MAC address. This is a lot of information, mm -hmm. right? So now I can go through and go, hey, is that IoT device already on the network? If it's not, then, well, can I now write a script to put it on the network? If you need to find that out, you gotta come and reference the API docs. All right, now, Justin, I have a question about how this works uh, in, in terms of just trying to make sure I understand it. So you wrote a script, mm -hmm. Python script, and then you called the STK by using the pip install so how does that interact, the, the Python script and the, S, the SDK together? Okay, great question. Uh, and this is one of those things where Ronnie's asking questions that I kind of take for granted, Yeah. right? Um, so when I pip install, that becomes available in my Python executable path. The only reason that I can use those, right? This right here, I can say from Meraki underscore SDK dot Meraki SDK client import and that other line is because I did that pip install. That means everything's kind of connected together. If I went to Ronnie's machine, which does not have this installation, this would immediately fail, okay? 
So that does mean you need to do a pip install. I've intentionally left out any other packages just to make this easy because I showed you how to install that. But if you don't do that, you'll get a cannot find or cannot import. So do keep that in mind. So the, the different SDKs that come along, so there's a Meraki SDK, there's probably going to be a Cisco DNA SDK, there's going to be all these other things. We need to make sure that if we're going to try something like this, that we install the proper one to do that, right? Yep. And you're always going to want to consult the, the documentation, the cur most current documentation, right. because the Meraki one has changed. Uh, me just playing around with it, it has changed over probably the last 18 months a couple of times, and there's some duplicates. So always come to, and if we can come back to my screen here, this uh, developer.cisco.com and look up your respective technology that you need to interface with. In addition to, there are some services that do not currently have SDKs and you'll have to make raw web, web requests. Um, so you will have to invent the wheel, but maybe you can be the writer of the SDK. If you get the most up-to-date version of them, then you can come through and look. It's kind of, it's one of those weird things where I need to zoom in so you can see it, but then it crowds and it gets weird. <laughs> So if I look and I go, oh, okay, there we go. Notice I have a REST, a Python, a Ruby, and Node.js. Make sure you've picked the correct language. Otherwise, you'll get some documentation where you go, what is going on? <laughs> um, so I'm going to come down here and look at, let's see here. Where did I go here? Networks. So if I look at networks, notice it'll say, well, how do I get a network? And I'll say get network and you need a network ID. Currently the documentation is getting better, but it's not great at times. So you have to dig in a little bit, make sure you have the correct one selected. Um, but that's how you would use an SDK to start building these. I need to get all this information, right? I need to collect this together. And you can delete networks. Uh, sometimes there are there are things that you may not be able to do exactly how you want them. As this grows, that will probably change. All right, Justin, well, thank you again for helping me and helping us to make sure that we understand more about how we're going to be able to interact with that SDK to work at scale. And that's actually kind of the key behind making sure that we understand some of the things that we're doing. But there is a lot more to it, and that means there's other episodes to come, but that will be for a different day. So signing off for IT Pro TV. I'm your host, Ronnie Wong. And I'm Justin Dennison. Stay tuned right here for more of your Cisco Certified DevNet Associate Show. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.